You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Boss Hog of Liberty Podcast. This is episode number 121 of East Central Indiana's favorite podcast. I'm Jeremiah Morrill. Today, joined by Dakota Davis and Mason Roddinghouse, our intern. Chris Guffey is our producer. And we're going to be starting the show with uh, Henry County's Miss Henry County, Brittany Alvarez. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Today's episode features us live at the Henry County uh, 4-H Fair that it's a great, beautiful day outside. We've been loving the weather in East Central Indiana. So stick around with us as we talk about everything 4-H, everything fair-related, and we might make Intern Mason do some uh, weird food activities like we always promise. So make sure you stick around to the very end. This show is about our lives in rural Indiana. Uh, it's actually caused us to be outside today. Uh, we're here to push your boundaries and make you think as individuals. Sometimes we will provoke you. Other times we'll make you laugh. Hopefully you'll always learn something new. Uh, really excited to be, uh, to be at the Henry County 4-H Fair, where we are sitting right now when I was uh, a young lad. Mm. I, I had my very first 4-H project was in this space, in this parking lot that's now a tent that used to be an overhang. This is where the sheep were. So 1994, I think it would be, pre-Dakota Davis... Mm, yeah, little Jeremiah Morrill was out here with his uh, with his Suffolk land. I think that I've seen the pictures. It's, from, they're from out there. there. They're very real. Uh, he had glasses so yeah. on. Not, not cool. much has changed. Uh, look- I don't even. I, I don't even know if I had glasses yet. I went. I went no ah. glasses to glasses, and then uh, and then no glasses again. Maybe I haven't seen that picture. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, there's there's a lot of them out there. So it's uh it's really cool to be out here. We were invited uh, by the extension staff to do a, a live show. Uh, I've been out here at the fair all week. My, uh, uh, as I said, I, I started out here as a kid, and I stayed with the program. Uh, my wife, Sarah, who's down at the uh, end of the table here, and I are program leaders for the, uh, the Junior Leader Project. And then, of course, this podcast uh, has been around for a little over two years, uh, produced here in Henry County. Uh, we cover local issues, national issues, and anything we find interesting. That's right. And the people who make the podcast happen, we want to give a special shout out to all of those folks over at our Patreon site. The people on the Patreon site, um, you guys are the folks that pay the bills, help us keep our studio in the beautiful downtown Newcastle open. You keep the rent paid, the electricity on, and make sure that there's AC going whenever we need to record something. And if you're over that $50 $50 a month mark, then we promise to make sure that the world knows that you are awesome. Those folks are Christopher Bilbrey, Christy Avery, Jonathan Phillips, and all the way from Hawaii, Craig DaCosta. It's an amazing thing to have, uh, have folks that support us every month that pay the bills. Uh, all we have to do is show up and, and try to engineer it. We have tested our skills this week. No yeah, doubt we about it, uh, putting, putting this together. So our first guest that we have today, uh, Brittany Alvarez. Hello. I've known you a long time. Is this your first podcast? Have you done one before? Never done one before, but I listen to plenty. You listen to plenty. What's your favorite podcast? What do you listen to? Easy answer. Balls Hall. Uh, <laughs> Dear Hank and John, hosted by John and Hank Green. All right. Where's that from? Is that an international podcast, a national podcast? Yeah, international. It started with um, John Green, the author, and his brother have like a YouTube series called Vlog Brothers, and now they just answer questions weekly and get into weird antics and talk about AFC Wimbledon, which is a soccer team out in London, and then they talk about Mars News. So John Green's an Indianapolis guy, isn't he? Yeah. Doesn't he, doesn't he live in Indy? Yeah. He's the Fault in Our Stars dude, right? Yep. Yeah. The only reason I know about him is he's a big IndyCar fan, too. Uh, just like me. He drove the uh, pace car for, I think, the first, uh, first Grand Prix of Indianapolis. Maybe the second yeah. one. So, but that's not why you're here. <laughs> that's not the point, right, Dakota? <laughs> I already, I've already derailed Absolutely us. correct. I said it'll take, you know, this might be a three-hour show. Uh, you are representing 4-H all year long. You, were, uh, you became Miss Henry County. You took over the mantle last fall. Is that, is that right? Yeah, this fall. Well, past fall. So what kind of stuff have you done? So, like, mainly, like, the job entails helping out the 4-H staff when at all possible and, like, 
showing off what 4-H really is and that it's not just livestock or projects. It's about like growing future leaders and showing off like the best that our community has to offer. So, so you, the, the title of Miss Henry County comes with uh, some additional responsibility. Yeah. Uh, how, have you enjoyed your time? Honestly, my favorite part was like anything involving mini 4 H, seeing the little kids get out here and try something new has been absolutely amazing. And they're all like so cute and so excited, which is a nice change to seeing like the older kids who are amazing showing off what they've worked for for you know, like 10 years, seeing the minis get out there for the first time has been absolutely wonderful. For sure. So you've been, uh, you've been out at every show throughout the week. Yep. You started on over the weekend with the livestock out here. Did you learn anything? Did you know anything about showing cows, showing goats, showing pigs before this week started? Okay, so I showed cattle in mini 4 so I did know a little bit, and I used to do horse and pony. But I had never done anything with pigs, and it was kind of interesting. Standing out there for so many hours, I got to see what the judge saw and all the different animals. And so I started to sit there and kind of go along with what the judge was doing and start to make ideas of who was, like, was going to be first and second. So I learned a lot about like the structure of animals. So now you, you feel like you'd, you'd be able to... Pick a good pork chop? I hope. <laughs> I mean, I know if they taste delicious, but I can't tell if they look great. How many times have had your picture taken this week? You've been I, in a lot of championship pictures, I'd imagine, right? Actually, I don't think I've been in that many championship pictures, but there was a selfie scavenger hunt, and I had quite a few kids run up to me and say, can I have your picture? And that was kind of awkward because I was like getting out of the restroom, like washing my hands. <laughs> they just run up and be like, hey, it's you. And I was like so disoriented. There's but just no, when you're a local celebrity, there's no privacy at all. You going just, to Walmart's kind of interesting yeah. right after the fair. Do, do you wear the sash and the, uh, the tiara in Walmart? The tiara is so pinned down to my head that it would take at least a solid five minutes to take off. So if it's like a quick, I need like milk and bread kind of thing, everyone's like, hey, it's you. And they point and stare the whole time. So I try to make it quick. If I ever had to wear that tiara, honestly, I'd probably never take it off. Oh, well, don't worry. You won't. Yeah. There's very little chance you're going to have to wear a tiara in your life, Mason. Listen, you don't know my story. <laughs> Knowing you, you would never take it off. I would never take it off. We'd, uh, we'd, we'd make sure that we could affix it to your head in some type of permanent fashion. I'll get I'm a sure. weave. <laughs> get a weave So the tiara. One of our goals today is we're going to highlight some of the stuff that's happened out here at the fair. On Tuesday evening... Uh, there was a charity pie auction for the, put together by the junior leaders, uh, and it goes towards junior leader scholarships or 4-H Foundation scholarships. Um, I purchased a pie as the boss of Liberty, so the podcast has uh, has purchased a chocolate. It's it's the chocolate pie or the chocolate chip pie. The chocolate chip pie. And uh, lovely Sarah Morrill is going to uh, to cut it up and we're going to have some people test it. And if you're in the audience, we'll probably find a little slice of it for you guys as well to try it out. I have been, uh, I've been eyeing that pie all night. Yeah, pass it down. <laughs> so, and this is the best thing that Mason is going to try all, all week because we have some other surprises down here as well. Uh, well at the beginning of the show... Uh, you heard us talk about the Patreon folks, and the show is put uh, put on the air because of the folks that donate to Patreon. Uh, a new pepper was announced this week called an X pepper. Pepper X. A pepper what? X. Pepper X. Pepper it's X. not the X pepper. It's pepper. It's not X. the X factor. It's the X, the pepper X. <laughs> so the pepper X exists in the world, and it's supposed to be three million Schofield. Scoville. Yeah. Sco oh, whatever. Schofield? Units. Three oh. million hot units. Whatever a hot unit is, that's what it Three is. Three million plus Scoville units. We, uh, on last week's show, we did the Tabasco peppers that I grew, and I found out that those are 89,000 Scoville units. And just eating a third of that little pepper between us caught us off guard. So add, I was, add I was two surprised. more zeros. So what we've done... Uh, is Mason said that if we achieve six hundred dollars a month, which 600. is we are not that far off. <laughs> believe it or not, we're not that far off on six hundred dollars a month on the Patreon. We are going to secure a an X rated. Pepper. I don't know. Do we have to get that through like the black market? or I something? I don't know. We're probably Hold gonna on. have to use Bitcoin to buy it. First of all, the addition, the first deal was seven hundred and fifty dollars, and the whole cast does it. Mason, yeah, Mason said Mason six hundred. He would do it. I'm not gonna do it. At I will 600. do it. For six hundred dollars a month on our Patreon, I will eat that whole pepper live. The whole pepper. So the whole pepper. The thing is, is I don't know. I I don't know what kind of talent you have in that area. None. So I purchased 
on the way to the show tonight, I purchased a whole pile of jalapenos. And we're just going to see how you do, because those are about 15,000 on, uh, on the hot unit that I can't pronounce. They're Scoville. About, Scoville. Showville? Showville. Scoville? Schofield. Cadillac Seville. So they're about, <laughs> they're about 15,000 on that list, and you're going to go to 3 million. So we're going to let you try the, uh, the chocolate chip pie, At- <laughs> but then we're just going to go work through Mason Roddinghouse. Sarah, can I have the, the biggest piece, intern. please? <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's earned it. The biggest piece is still back there in the uh, in the pie plate. Uh, the biggest piece that I have to select from. You know what? Don't be beggars can't be choosers. <sighs> I don't know if we want to. That that's the biggest piece that's being assigned to you. Do you like the piece? No. no. Brittany, you uh, you you made a pie as well. I did make a pie. And your brother always made pies. Yeah. And what you what was yours this year? So I tried to show up my brother by doing the same pie, but make it better. Yes. And so I did a chili pie, which was like just like a sourdough kind of crust with some sour cream mixed into it with shredded trees sprinkled on top. And the filling was like homemade chili. That was my mom's home ec teacher's recipe from like 1988. A pre-internet pie. Was that yeah. Virginia Newkirk? No. <laughs> your mom not- <laughs> no, my mom went to like school in Miami, Florida. Oh, so it was yeah. Virginia Newkirk. Yeah, Virginia yeah, came back up from Florida and just followed, followed her up. Yeah, totally. Followed her from up from south. All right. What do you guys think? How, are you trying it? This it's, is a, it's absolutely amazing. This I'm is a $110 done. pie. I'm almost what? done. This is a premium pie. It, it was, was all a, for charity. They raised, <laughs> they raised over $1,300 for, scholarship, for 4-H scholarships on Tuesday night. I think $110 is cheap for how It was a deal, huh? It, we, it came with ribbons. It came. This was a blue uh, honor ribbon pie. We're, I'm trying to find our camera over here. Uh, if you're listening to the podcast in your car, there is a, a live camera out here. So we we magically found a way to uh, to get Who live out here. Who is the judge at the pie contest? The show. Uh, I think it may have been Sherry Poff. Your Cl- boss, Clay Morgan. Oh, <laughs> it was Clay oh, it Morgan. Was Clay. It was Clay. Our friend Clay, Councilman Clay Morgan. Um, you can hear a Clay on this podcast a number of times. I'm going to try one bite here. I don't typically do just this. Just eat it all. It's absolutely amazing. Your pie sounds fantastic because of the savory. So I feel mm. like with your chili pie. This is really good. We could, we could eat that for dinner and then eat this chocolate pie for dessert. See, this that was the point to do something good. that wasn't a dessert pie. I like that idea. You're thinking outside the box. Now That's my how you get is, to be Miss Henry County. Dakota, my question is, is, how much do we have to pay you to make another one of those pies? <laughs> just for the podcast. Did... Uh, did did Nate Lamar buy that pie? Yeah, he did. That's what I thought. We'll have to talk. To How him. did you know that? Uh, Boy, that was impressive. He made a post about it on Facebook. Nate, okay, yeah. all right. So, Here's did you Mr. ever make any pies in 4-H? I made one pie in 4-H, and it was the first fruit pie I've ever made in my entire life. What How kind did of it pie? Go? Was it a blue ribbon, red ribbon? It was a blue honor pie, oh. and it was. I didn't follow like the 4-H standard of doing like a test run and then turning in something. I just made something and turned it in. And you just went for it. Yep. Who's this? Uh, who's this strapping fellow that just sat down next to you, Brittany? It's my counterpart, Mister Henry County. There's a Mister Henry County. There's a Mister. I'm playing dumb. Believe it or not, I was a Mister Henry County. Of Many course years you were. ago. <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago, we almost should, the last millennium. Yeah, in the right. year, in the year even, 2000. We should unearth those photos. 20, here. <laughs> 20 fairs ago. It's Henry been a County, while. New York? <laughs> no, this one. This is the one. Hmm. Uh, what's, what's Mr. Henry County's name this year? Do what? He's, he's, he's here. Oh. You're, you're on the show. You're, this is live to the world. Oh, there's, there's like 72 people watching out there and actually a couple hundred on the show. Oh. Uh, I'm Luke Kaufman, Mr. Henry County, 2019. Uh, been in 4-H for nine years. Luke Kaufman. Yep. Luke Kaufman, the guy that, that push mows everybody's yard for money? Luke yep. Kaufman? Yep, that's me. That's the guy? Yep, sir. All right. So what are you eating over there? Uh, chocolate chip pie. A chocolate chip pie. What, uh, what's your favorite 4-H project, Luke? Um, you have to hold the mic closer. If you're going to be a, an assistant to the regional uh, producer... You gotta you gotta get closer on the reporter duties. Um, I would say probably swine or cattle. Swine or cattle. Uh huh. How'd you do? Did you do both projects this year? Yep. What What I, was better? Uh, swine. Swine went better. Yep. I had fifth best overall gill. And to our listeners that uh, no are look. not in Henry County, Indiana, what's a swine? A hog. A hog. And to those that don't know what a hog is, what's that mean? It's a pig. A pig. And what does a pig make? Pork. Pork. All right. 
<laughs> yeah, what sound Sarah oink, says? Oink, oink, oink. Is that the one with the flu? No, no. These are these are oh. all flu free. I was just making sure. <laughs> what uh, what's been your favorite experience throughout the week? Um, I can. Yeah, she can hold. Oh, apparently, you're you're. She's going to leave you now. Now it's now it's just the Luke Kaufman show. Thank you very much, Brittany. She's got to go. There's a round robin show happening right now, and we'll explain what round robin is in a minute. Apparently, you were not a good enough showman to make round robin, Luke. Evidently, not yet. Did you ever make round robin? Mm, not yet. How many years of 4-H have you been in? Nine. So you got one more shot. Yep. You probably ought to show six species next year, maybe okay. seven, to have a shot at it. Give it a shot. Yeah. So what was your fa- your favorite was swine? Mm-hmm. Did you ever do any of the other projects? Mm, nope. Just livestock. Yep. All right. So what's Round Robin? Explain that to the world. To, uh, to those that are, because now, because Round Robin is the other big event that's happening tonight. Uh, Round Robin, there's eight species overall. Um, there's what, horse, beef cattle, dairy beef cattle, uh, dairy cattle, sheep, meat goats, dairy goats, and horses, right? Yep. I already say yep. that. Yep, we counted horses twice, but that, that, that works. Well, that's Hagerstown math for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the horses are twice as important. You just start and finish with them. Um, and what they do is they take the overall showman out of each species and throw them together and make them show everything. So, and the round robin winner is the one that can show all those the best. And they're still working on picking a winner over there now. Yeah, they're still trying to get through the show. <laughs> how's uh, how's your experience been out here? Passing out ribbons at every everything. Have you did you? Are there things you've learned you had no idea? You were you around beef. What did oh, you yeah. think of the sheep show? Uh, passed out ribbons. You passed out ribbons. Yep. Had you have you ever shown a sheep? No. So I was telling the story when we started. I showed sheep, and I was I was very disappointed to find out that I just had to manhandle the thing. Yep. Eleven year old kid, and you're out there holding the, holding the sheep with your two hands by the neck. Yeah. And you're expect they weigh 140 pounds, and you weigh 110 pounds, and you're expected to convince this lamb to walk with you. Right. How many got away? Um. Yesterday, well, I don't think there were any sheep that got away. There was just one goat, maybe. How far did it get? Well, not very far. Not very far. Ah. Yeah, some little girl. You got to bring the stories, man. You got to. Yeah. The, the, we're here for the dirt. We want to hear about the crazy stuff that happened. Never let a, the truth get in the way of a good story. I want to yeah. hear about the goat that made it all the way to the golf course and <laughs> snatched up a ball, and then you couldn't find it. Mm. Sounds a bit like uh, Happy Gilmore to me. <laughs> Did, uh, did you do the Farmer Olympics? Yes, sir. So this is the 19th. Yes, yesterday was the 19th Farmer Olympics, what, uh, which I, is ridiculously crazy to me to hear that. What, uh, what, what's in the Farmer Olympics? Um, there is, well, they, they've changed things up a little bit, but there's like a, a, a wheelbarrow race, a hay bale toss, where you, uh, a little thing where you've got to feed the hogs. Um, you've got to hang... The clothes on the line, and then there's a fire brigade. So there's all these different events. How many people are on a team? It's a relay. Yep, there's between seven and eight on a team. Seven or eight people on a team, and you're going for time. You're competing against each other. How's it go? Uh, you compete against each other. You're trying to beat the other team, and they set it up on a bracket, and you advance to the back bracket. It's like the NCAA. Pretty much. Did you win? Uh, no, we... We were close, but not good enough to win. So what happened? What was the failure? Uh, it's, it's a safe space. You can tell us what happened. Um, I don't know. We just went out. Don't there be to afraid have fun. to drop names. Yeah, don't be afraid to tell us who caused the problem. <laughs> hey, don't let the truth get in, in the way of a good story, as Dakota right. said. I appreciate you giving me credit for that line. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you uncomfortable and you just want to be left left alone now? No. Are you I'm over all right. it? I'm all we, right. We, all right. we heard in the comments from Chris Lamb that you were uh, that uh, you were in the building trades program. Uh, yes, I was. We've what, been uh, talking about the building trades a been, lot on this show. We have really. I I also did building trades. Um, yeah. Whenever I was in high school, uh, my junior and senior year, but we've talked about the whole career center, just a whole lot on this uh, on the program in previous episodes. Um, 
You want to give a pitch to any like uh, high school freshmen or sophomores out there that are thinking about uh, doing any vocational schools as Mr. Henry County? Um, I did building trades. We built a uh, Habitat for Humanity house um, over right in Newcastle. Um, it was a great learning experience. We covered like all, a lot of plumbing, rough construction, roofing, um, a lot of finished carpenter work. Um, and it, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of kids that I was in the class with made it a lot of fun. Um, you know, don't be afraid to try something new, I guess, you know. All right. You heard it from Mr. Henry County to, to definitely do building trades. At all, all right. costs. No matter what, don't give up. That's right. All right, Luke, thank you for joining us. Hey, not a problem. Do you, uh, if you had to pick something for our, our intern Mason to have to eat, do you think he has to eat, should eat a I'll, whole jar of peanut butter? Hold on. Let me, let me, let me give him the options. You're not the, you're not the one that's, whose <laughs> mouth it's going in. Listen. Now we get to go either more pie. No, 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 no. You've had all the pie you're getting. <laughs> it's on the table. That's all the pie you get. So it's either that's, that's for the guests that show up. All that crowd out there gets the pie. You've had all the pie. You all right. Have. Well, then you get to choose between. You have there's a the jar there's a of, bag of marshmallows, peanut butter, the marshmallows, <laughs> or the always delicious fifteen thousand voltage or whatever Scoville. <laughs> On that scale. I think you need to put them all together. Jalapenos. I think you need to put the marshmallow on top of the jalapeno, uh, make a sandwich, and then and hold it all it together peanut with peanut butter. butter. Yes. You use the peanut that butter to hold disgusting. it together. Do it. I think Please that's. Do. I think that's the yeah. plan. That's, that's how many it. peppers I'm giving do you have you, to eat? How many? I'm giving you the. Sarah's going to start assembling. It's up your first, to you. Sarah's do going not to make assemble one your of first those. sandwich. That would be disgusting. I, if you do it, I will let you have another piece of pie. I would not like another piece of pie. <laughs> you have. To, this is this is the this is your job. <laughs> oh, how the mighty have fallen! <laughs> if you if I you can't watched. do this, Luke, Sarah, if you can't do, you, do this. How can he possibly like, eat an extra? It's like pepper? a nasty ants on a log that you're making. <laughs> It, it actually kind of is. We just need the raisins. Sprinkle the, the seeds on top of the peanut butter and put a marshmallow on top. And Oh, peanut oh butter. So up to you, Mr. Kaufman. Out in, the, out in the back of the crowd, I see Justin Curley. We have him lined up. So if you want to cycle around here, Justin, and have a seat, we'll have you on the program real quick. He's already nervous, and he's going to pretend like he can't hear me. He's got the bad ear, and he's going to – Yeah, well, it's uh, – we'll, we'll talk louder, and we'll tell Mason he has to sign as well. <laughs> Sarah you, has cut the pepper in half. Language, Sarah has cut the pepper in half, and she is putting, she is lathering the peanut butter. Mason Rodding House is um, certified in American Sign Language one, two, and three, taught by nice. three different high school teachers. Three, three. Do you speak in the third person all the time, like your Bob Dole over there, Mason? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mason Rodding House does. <laughs> You had three different teachers? I had my freshman year, I had um, Nikki Llewellyn. Then sophomore year, I had, um, her name was Jackie Ray. I believe she lives out in Colorado now. And then I didn't take it junior year and took the last year of my Would uh, you like a slice of pie? We can get you a slice Vicky of pie. Bell. Uh, so you did have Mrs. So Bell. I had the GOAT the last yeah. year of high school. Mrs. Bell is the greatest of all time. Why did you make all these teachers quit? Because I, what's wrong with you, Mason? The only one that stood still is he's a horrible intern. He's got to be a horrible student. <laughs> <laughs> this will be my last show. <laughs> so we welcome in uh, Justin Curley. Justin, can you hear us? Okay, is is this okay? He's eating pie. My mouth is full. You've given me pie as soon as I got here, which is a great way to get me to stay. So Ready, I got to say, I'm surprised at how legit you guys are with this like fancy boss hog of Liberty microphone. And oh, we've got, we got the mic flags. We've got the, we got the microphones. We've, uh, we, we, the high definition camera. It's, this is a real We're deal. We're breaking in here real quick, Jeremiah. I'm dink not it. fit for high definition. They're about to sink so it and dink it. Dink, dink it and it sink, it. sink it. Oh, there it is. Dakota and Mason have eaten a, uh, a marshmallow jalapeno peanut butter. <laughs> And we've already lost Mason. This doesn't look good for Mason. He cannot get this down. This is not going to go. Stupid human tricks with Mason. <clears throat> He's chewing. Dakota's chewing. Guffy, at some point you have to help carry the show now. You are the other professional I'm, here. I, I'm not a professional. I'm just the producer. Not, not I stay bad. off the camera. How is it, Dakota? It's really not bad. You want to follow it up with a piece of chocolate pie? Oh. <laughs> 
I feel like they should have like a mayonnaise shooter at the end. Now, you know, you want some it mayonnaise packets? Awful. Could use some more peanut butter. You um, need more peanut butter? I'm sweating. <laughs> it is July. That's not bad at all. I'm going to take a second bite. <laughs> it actually isn't bad. I mean, it's, it's like the... Sh- so, when Scotty's choking. Uh, when Scotty's was around, they, had, they would have a jalapeno cut up with peanut butter on a burger, a cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. So, it was the Schumann burger. It reminds me of that. It's, that's it's exactly what it would be. pretty decent tasting. Yeah. The marshmallow added, like, this... It didn't add a little sweet flavor, but it added, like, some... Some texture. Some texture to offset the crunchy. <laughs> I got the hiccups. <laughs> I think so hiccups, hiccups happen, Mason, when, uh, when you eat something really hot. I learned this on our Ghost Pepper episode. I had no idea going in until, just this, uh, <laughs> until we started this show. Yeah, we ate Ghost Peppers. That was an adventure. Now, look at, look at Justin down there just enjoying that sweet, delicious pie while the rest of you are eating jalapenos. So I knew as soon as I put pie in my mouth, somebody would say something to me. So I'm just patiently awaiting. These are the worst hiccups I've ever had. <laughs> you don't just do well wait. That's spicy. only the first pepper, and there's a whole there's a whole pile over there. Honey barbecue at B Dubs is hot to me. How does one become <laughs> the intern at the Boss Hog of Liberty? How did this happen to you? Uh, well, basically, what had happened was <laughs> he just got invited on, and now he's the new man. So that that, that makes you the intern. I wa- I was the intern. Then I was the producer. So eventually, you can become the producer. So you are, uh, you are listening okay. to the Boss Hog of Liberty podcast, episode 121. We are live at the Henry County 4-H Fair. We've got a crowd gathered out here at the fair, and uh, we are broadcasting live. If you're uh, listening in the Henry County area, you can join us. Uh, we're broadcasting in the uh, tent just outside the W.G. Smith Building, Memorial Park. Uh, been a busy week at the fair all week out here, Justin Curley. You're the extension director for, uh, for Purdue University in Henry County. And one of the things that you guys do is you put on the 4-H program. Go Boilers. Boiler up. Sarah, say it. Sarah's over there. Say Boiler up. She won't do it. Uh, 4-H, everybody knows, or a lot of people know, 4-H is an agriculture, a Department of Agriculture program. IU has a good ag program. (laughs) Mason, put another pepper in your mouth. We're having an interview over here. (laughs) (laughs) So, Justin, I wanted to ask about... I guess 4-H, there's, there's some diversity. It's not just ag programs anymore. There's a lot more than that out here. No, it's definitely not. Um, I would say that I don't think there's a kid out there who can't find a place in 4-H. Um, if you're into art, if you're into technology, if you're into science, if you're into agriculture, um, there's literally something for everybody. Um, I was a 4 h as a kid, and all I knew was the ag stuff. I showed cows. It was my deal. And uh, I loved it, but I had no idea all the other things that 4-H had to offer. And I think that that's common. I think a lot of people have a misconception that it's, it's just a straight ag kind of a uh, program, but there's literally something for every kid. So you've got, you have public speaking opportunities. Uh, you have, if you're into bowling, if you're into rocketry, photography, um, Crafting, le- like leather work, needlepoint, all kind. I mean, it's it's a broad variety. There's cakes in there I, in the, in the a, Smith Building. They're, they're not like, actual cakes. They're not if cakes. If you eat them, you'll be disappointed because I think they're styrofoam. That's but that covered frosting, in frosting looks good. but it smells so good. Frosting um, looks good. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing the 4-H gives kids is the opportunity to learn leadership skills, the opportunity to get in front of people and to talk to people and to get out of their comfort zone and do it early. I'm super out of my comfort zone right now, and I'm starting to try to figure this out at 38. Um, but these kids that are figuring it out when they're 9, 10, 11, um, they're going to go places because they're going to have such a head start on the people like me who are starting late. Now, I, I never did 4-H whenever I was growing up. My Shame sister, on you. My sister, however, did. My sister did a few years of 4-H. And your wife, your wife did. Your but, wife's a Henry County 4-H yes, alum. Yeah, she did. My, my wife made it a lot farther than my sister did. Um, my sister gave up after she tried ceramics. And um, the, because, uh, because uh, my mom uh, was a stay-at-home mom whenever I was growing up, and because of that, I had to go to my sister's 4-H activity. So it was basically like I did 4-H by extension through my sister. 
So she did ceramics her last year, and we went to the ceramics class. Um, and my sister did not, for some reason, didn't grasp that if the ceramic model is very thin, then it was also very fragile. And she broke like four little ballerina figurines in a row. And my mom had to keep getting new ones for her. And uh, after that, my sister quit because she got super frustrated. But I was more disappointed that she quit than anybody because I missed out on the cool activities. I made a really sweet ceramic figurine that year. But, you know. You should have entered it in 4-H. should have entered it in 4-H. In Where world. did my pie go? I, I turned my head for two minutes and my <laughs> pie is gone. I ate the pie because there was peanut butter left over <laughs> on the plate. And I was like. I'm worried yeah. about your intern. He looks. Bring on another one. Are you heathen? <laughs> Let's go. Can you eat a raw pepper? Let's try it. Let's go. Let's go just one straight up. So. Are there peppers like this in the uh, in the Smith Building? Did anybody can they enter peppers as a project? Yeah, they certainly can. I did not see any jalapenos. I saw your typical green sweet peppers. You don't um, have the um, uh, so. So if somebody grows a, a habanero pepper, they could enter it in 4-H. They certainly can. Man, we might have to Something go through to the Smith Building to. to go through the Smith Building and just find things for Mason to eat. So where do these lovely peppers come from? These are from the Kroger. <laughs> these uh, these 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 were grown at the Kroger in aisle one. Mason, produce that's department. Where, that's where all food comes from, yeah, right? Just, the they, they, just, they just they just come right from the uh, right from the oh, back of the store. Oh, she gave you a biggin. Are you gonna? Am I just supposed to eat this? Yeah, like, I think I think you just you eat like it like go. Yeah, just leave the little nub on the end. You want to toss some your marshmallows mouth? over here and. Maybe a slice it, of that pie. It's not that bad, dude. It's a holiday. Eat the whole thing. It. Honey barbecue's hot. <laughs> you just got to put it in your mouth. <laughs> Don't bite into it till you get to the end. Bite, take the whole thing and bite it. <laughs> bite it. <laughs> he choked on a pepper. But it's he ate half of it. It's it's get it all down. Um, tip tip. Chew fast. Chew very. The quickly. longer you keep it in there, the worse it's gonna be. The more you chew it up, the hotter it's gonna get. You really should just go right down with it. No, because then it. Didn't you ever watch The tummy. Office? If you're gonna stare in somebody's eyes, stare into the camera so the viewers at home can see it instead of me. It's just creepy when you look at me. Justin, I'd like to apologize. <laughs> this is uh, this is great radio. I one, of, one of these days we'll have to have Justin on for a more serious episode. Whenever Mason isn't here, distracting us. <laughs> He's going to puke. I got down. It's down. Uh, well, you got half of it down. Do you like the fear factor thing where you go, <laughs> are you going to finish the pepper or not? <laughs> I will say that I'm glad that uh, I'm glad Mason's here doing this. Uh, this is the first dry episode of the Boss Hogger Liberty podcast in the history of the show. Uh, because we are at a youth event, and we're wa- we're doing the best we can to. Uh, I appreciate your restraint, all of it's you. Like I'm so, in Albany, uh, Kentucky. Tip to not say I know this isn't easy for you guys to not say anything that would come out of Chase Payton's mouth. Um, especially Mason over there eating a eating a pepper. This is this is quite the event. His eyes have turned red, and he, he's. We can get you some <laughs> ice cold milk from our junior he leader booth. Some milk. <laughs> <laughs> Call the emblem. He needs some milk. <laughs> <laughs> Will you finish that pepper? There are starving kids in, in Spiceland that would love to eat that. <laughs> I'm sure they wouldn't want that. <laughs> if there's any starving kids in Anthony, Spiceland. Anthony Gober is watching in the, uh, in the live stream, and he says you've still got another half. You're not done. I don't see that. Is he the only one watching? Well, no, there's, there's, <laughs> we are, there are right Justin, now. Justin, how uh, insulting. There, there's <laughs> more than you realize, Justin. Uh, watching the live feed, and uh, and there's kids in the back having a great time. They're playing in uh, in the corn. Wait till we have. You want to eat feed corn next? <laughs> I'll do kids it. have been playing in it all week. He's he's working on a marshmallow. Is that making it any better at all? It's just a jalapeno, man. Yeah, but like the tip of my tongue <laughs> and the inside of my lips, dude. It's that's it. You're gonna freak out if we get to six hundred. <laughs> You're going to freak out. I this told is, you I'd do that. I'm a man of my word. After I did a ghost pepper, I really swore there was no pepper that would ever hurt again after a ghost pepper. 
the X pepper or, or the X pepper, pepper challenge or the pepper X. But then a few weeks later, you ate a habanero. I did eat a habanero. I ate a whole habanero without just thinking it was a sweet pepper, and it was hot for a moment. Um, I am but I've never, sweating. I've never seen a child react to a, I mean, to a, a jalapeno as bad I'm as legally you are. a man. <laughs> He's a grown adult. I'm a grown man. Does anybody else want to try a whole jalapeno pepper? Any, anybody in the audience want to want to try one? Guffy, do you want do you want in on this? Are you gonna, you gonna finish it? <laughs> finish no. it. Finish. Can you can you do Mason sap? Can you can you finish Mason's un, unfinished work? Well, yeah, I, I can. That's what the, that's the job of the producers. Finish everybody's unfinished work. Just cover up for his mistakes. Good description. Here he goes. I, let's get back to Justin. All right. A few weeks yes, ago. Yes, I'm not doing my job mm-hmm. right now so that I can be here. We so. are very easily yeah. distracted. Uh, a few weeks ago, we came in and uh, we did a civics presentation at the Henry County Extension Office. Um, this is a safe place. No, no holds barred. Rate us on a scale of one to ten. How how was our presentation? What can we improve upon? If and and also, are we going to be invited next year? And if so, what can we improve upon? So, not big on the number scale. I think you guys were somewhere between a seven and a half and an eight. I wow. thought, boy, that's were, a French judge score there. Right? That, that's so, higher than I gave us. So, I uh, I thought you were fun, which helps, right? Because when you're Hopefully. When you're teaching kids things, like, if you can make it fun, they'll stay awake. So, I, I give you that. Um, and, yeah, you'll definitely be invited back next year. Um, we're looking forward to it. Looking forward to growing that program. Um, I like the idea of teaching kids um, about their government and how it works, because I think there's a lot of people who don't have much understanding of that. Um, so, anything we can do to help facilitate that. I think Just make sure good. next time, Producer Guffy's there. You need me there to, to keep these guys in line. Yeah, that's probably true, actually. Uh, so promote that program a little bit for us through the extension office. It was Adulting 101. Yeah. Yeah, so that was one segment of Adulting 101. We, we got in the, in the office, had a conversation about the fact that uh, kids go to school and they learn a lot of academia, but God help them if they had to change the oil in their car or balance a checkbook. Um, there's a lot of life skills that kids um, aren't getting directly taught in school, and a lot of kids, unfortunately, aren't getting it at home. So we thought it was an opportunity to uh, fill that gap and give kids the opportunity to learn something that they might not be learning otherwise. And I think that um, the program that you guys did where we're teaching kids about um, government and their community, how to be involved in their community, the opportunities that exist, um, being an informed citizen, uh, knowing your rights, um, registering to vote, um, the kind of things that uh, I would hope everybody would take seriously. For sure. Hope, I, I, I'm glad to hear that you gave us a seven and a half and an eight. I, I hope that you aren't just saying that and then... There's like later on down the road, I'm going to find out that you graded us while we were doing the presentation, and it was like three. We should have sent some <laughs> comment cards out, asked, uh, asked, for, or asked for live feedback as, uh, as that program happened. So beyond just 4-H, what else does Purdue Extension do? Well, you guys have uh, other, other facets. It's like a, yeah, a three-legged have, stool. We have several different program areas uh, that Purdue Extension covers, and... Um, my role with extension is in 4-H, but it's also in agriculture. Um, so I kind of consider myself the, the conduit to the land-grant university. Um, I'm not the master of anything. I'm not the expert of much. Um, but I can get you all the information you need to answer any questions you have in agriculture. And on top of that, you know, we'll deliver programming throughout the year. We'll bring in, um, bring in the experts, and they'll come into the community, and they'll have uh, – workshops and seminars and the kind of thing that it's it's bringing the land grant university right out into the county where people can actually you know get the benefit of their tax dollars because it's it's their money that that helps keep purdue going very cool well one of my favorite things about the 4-h fair and the in the the 4-h program is the volunteerism in the community that's uh that's built uh, guffy and mason are just uh wandering back and forth back here worried suffering through having their peppers 
Um, but the, the junior leader program that, that Sarah and I are a part of, um, it's, it's a way that kids from all over the county and all over the community get together. You don't see that in a lot of different ways uh, where they, you know, you have kids from Knightstown, Tri High, Blue River, Newcastle, uh, and then they build, build lifelong friendships. And um, it's been really neat coming out here and having, you know, now I'm a little over 20 years around the program, having been a kid myself and now coming through and seeing second and third generation folks go through. Um, you can really see that lifelong friendships and relationships are developed out here and it, and it just continues on. Yeah, without a doubt. I think when I think back to my time in 4-H, that's what I remember. I remember the friendships and the camaraderie and the, the things that you were doing on the on the side. I mean, the projects and the exhibits and the, you know, exhibiting livestock, that's all fun and kids love it. And it's it's very satisfying. But those friendships, those relationships, those memories, nothing can replace those. I think it was m- Monday night. The young farmers had their pedal pull out here. Is that is that accurate? Monday night, Tuesday night. I've lost track. All the nights blur what, together. Yeah, they, it just they just come it's at you fair. real fast. Uh, but there, in, under this tent, there was a pedal pole, and uh, some notable Boss Hog of Liberty uh, characters uh, had their kids in it. Uh, Danny Morrill's uh, little one was in here, and so was uh, Cade Coger's Cannon Coger, uh, and they both won their divisions. But uh, more than that, I was looking around and watching the guys that are putting that on. And I remember them starting that program before any of them had kids and then watching their sons and daughters go through. It was just, it was a neat full circle thing. That was the thing that I noticed the most is that it's a, it really is a family atmosphere in a program. Uh, and people that started something before they ever had kids or anybody in the program, then it's there for them and they've built something. It's just, it, it's, it's special, man. Yeah, and that says something for the program when people take the time to be involved when they don't have a direct interest with their kids. That shows how much they believe in something, right? If they're, they're giving of their time when it doesn't directly benefit them, I think that's, that's always indicative of something that's, that's a, a valuable use of we time. Got a, we got a gust of wind at our, uh, at our first outdoor podcast. And, I hope uh, that wasn't important. And it hit Justin right in the face. That was, that was <laughs> great. It hit uh, the featured guest. <laughs> that was great timing. But 4-H uh, is one of those things, man. Once it gets in your family, it just doesn't stop. It just keeps going from generation to generation to generation. Um, it's very seldom that ceramics will chase somebody right out of the program, um, but I guess uh, it, I well, guess it happens. Sometimes she you lose was like one. Uh, probably like six. So mini yeah. four eight. It, it was yeah. the emotional trauma of breaking four ballerinas' legs that I, it just did her in. Yeah, it, it's sad. I hope she's recovered, um, <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll try not to let that happen. Now, one more thing before we let you go, get back to your official duties. We brought a bunch of canned food, and except for the, the can of peanut butter that Mason got into, um, these will all go to a charity. What are, these, what are these cans of food for that we brought? So these are going to be donated to a local food pantry uh, as a part of the Indiana State Fair Fairs Care Program. Um, we're basically competing against other county fairs in the state to see who can um, collect the most donated food for their local food banks. And if you bring in a donation, you will be entered into a drawing for uh, – four pack of state fair tickets so um anybody who's listening who's going to be by the fair in the next day we would strongly encourage you to bring so, something out and so support come on out bring a can of food you're going to a good cause and you might win i guess 40 or 45 dollars worth of free state fair tickets yeah. for a can of beans yep yep and i'm actually thrilled to hear that's what's going on because i was waiting to see what your intern was going to do with the cream of mushroom soup yeah well it's uh that's getting blended up and we're drinking it as a smoothie <laughs> With the jalapenos. With jalapenos. We brought um, sour cream also. <laughs> and we're going to mix it. Are you, have you got your voice back? You, you're sounding like you're struggling. Dude, the roof of my mouth. <laughs> it just feels like it's been fried off. You know what I hear? A lot of whining. I can't do hot foods. It's a struggle. All right. All, we'll f- the, all the reason I thought you to get Purdue. us to $600. I thought you Purdue kids were supposed to be tough. Stop. I guess you are majoring in, in pharmaceuticals, so it's not something actually tough like agriculture. All right, gentlemen, still, I'm going to go do still, my job. He's still hold, barely hanging on. Thank you, Justin, very Keep much up the for good hanging work. out with us. You guys we'll, are awesome. We'll my stomach soon. hurts. <laughs> All right. Chris Guffey, uh, I want to talk to you for a minute because uh, there was an article in the paper that had uh, your name in it. That is true. Very true. I, I hear that you are the hero that uh, Newcastle needs? Well, th- I think that depends on who you talk to. 
So what we had was a ordinance that was going to reduce the speed of uh, what was it? Between they were gonna they were take it, gonna take a street. We don't have to get super. Yeah, super they were gonna take a street here. from thirty miles an hour down to twenty, due to the fact that a a person living on the street said that there were speeders and they were they were gunning it and they were getting up to sixty miles an hour. And I want everybody to know this is a two block stretch. Stop sign to stop sign, two blocks. Well, you know, the new Tesla Roadster can get go from zero to 60 in 2.1 seconds. So, Yeah. Show me somebody that drives a Tesla Roadster in town. Well, nobody, because they're not out yet. Well, so. okay. So anyways, <laughs> uh, so the ordinance was brought to the council. Like, you know, the council prepared it. And so they were asking for public comment. Well, the people that one of the speed limit reduce were there so they went first they brought grandchildren children you know the children they brought mm-hmm. the children they, and so they spoke and well i was the first one up i was like well listen i don't live on this street but if the average speed because the police chief had put out a speed sign that tracks speed through there for a month a little over a month and the average speed was between, I think he said between 24 to 26 miles an hour. The average speed. And so the speed limit is 30. Way so, below the speed yeah, limit. Yeah, so people are already going because they know in two blocks they've got another stop sign. There's no reason to get up and going. Um, so I was like, if the average speed limit's already 26 miles an hour, why would you lower it to 20? The average and, recorded speed is 20, 25, 26 miles yes, an hour. Yes, yes. The average recorded speed was 25 to 26. So, I said... And we already know Landon says he'll give you 17. Mm, yes. But mm-hmm. any, So, I was like, well, why would we lower it to 20? Now you're going to punish the 99% of people that are actually obeying the law and actually going under the speed limit for the 1%. And then, so after I spoke, uh, I, one of the residents on the, the street invited, a, invited everyone out to his house and sit there talking about traffic issues. So now it became a traffic issue... Instead of a speed limit issue, and then uh, there was a, there was another Patty Royal stepped up and she she was there with me and she she was on my side and next thing we know it went to the council they discussed and the vote failed four to three four to three it failed so, so your heroic testimony I started kept it people off people from becoming criminals uh, yep that's what I you're st- telling us yeah I started it off but your testimony still wasn't enough to sway. To persuade statist Aaron Dickin to vote no on the resolution. He did not want to vote Just no. point that out. Aaron Dickin wanted the speed limit 20 miles an hour, and he also won't let you have chickens in your backyard. I mean, I, where does it stop? If he wants 20, is 15 next? Yeah. So You just sl- don't know. Slippery slope. You just it, don't know. It is. It is a very slippery slope. Soon that road is going to be grass. <laughs> it's going to be walked on. It's going to be a mall. With trees, if we lower that speed limit even more, it's just going to be a th- public resting area. I, I think it just might be a speed trap on the way to Jack's Donuts. I, I think they're uh, they're repressing the folks at Jack's. That's what it is. Or to Taco Bell. Or, just, or if you're going from Jack's to Taco to Taco Bell. Yeah. But Chris, don't you care about the children? I do care about the children, but kids walk on every street in this town. Oh, I'm sorry that there's not a sidewalk there. Maybe we can address that issue and put a sidewalk on the other side of the street. But at this time, the lowering of the speed limit doesn't help anybody. It's silly. It, 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 makes, you, it makes people that are law-abiding citizens criminals. Yeah. Now you can ticket them for going six miles an hour of the speed limit when they are already following the rule, the law. And All right. So hold on. Now, the police chief did he's, say... He's on a soapbox, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> the police chief did say that they did clock one car going 53 miles an hour. 53 and a 30? What? 53 and a 30. But you know what? He was confident that that was either an, an ambulance or a cop car. Somebody with their lights on. Yep. Somebody running lights. He was confident in that. Huh. Interesting. Uh, yeah. I, I can't believe it. 
Well, we will uh, we'll see if the uh, if the voters want to make a change. Uh, there's uh, they've got the opportunity. There's a uh, there's a number of city council people on the ballot. There are. We'll there's see, three we'll contested races. Three contested races. A couple of other cool things out here at the fair this week before uh, before we run out of time, and they uh, they shuffle us out for the next uh, the next podcast. Uh, every day is out here is sponsored by a local business. Today it looks like it's Baker Crop Insurance Day, but they had L and K Produce Day out here too. Woo! L and K. I don't know where Cade's at, but his we but can't his stuff we can't was say that place. You you are you protesting? I'm protesting that place <laughs> until I am unbanned from the premises. I will continuously protest. And our mysterious other host, Danny Morrill, my baby brother with the much grayer hair, uh, he's supposed to be here, or we'd scheduled him to be here and join us to talk about his adventures on Saturday at the uh, Spiceland Freedom Days. Uh, because he played in a basketball tournament, but he's across the way as a 4-H horse and pony leader, along with the round robin that's going on. The uh, 4-H horse and pony show is happening right now, uh, about 500 feet away. So Danny is uh, occupied leading that. Mason, I understand you were a part of this as well. I did take the role of head official for the three versus three Spiceland Freedom, Day- Freedom Days basketball tournament. Well, now we know how Danny won. It was do collusion. You have, do you have any qualifications to be a basketball referee? I fishy up at, officiate up at Purdue, yeah. You do Big Ten games? Nope. Close. Right outside that arena. Right outside. On yeah. the intramural courts? On the intramural courts. Um, but I, I, I've made bets, and I'll stick to it. It's on camera. I will have a major conference men's basketball game under my belt before I die. Before you die, you're going to do a major, a major, you're going to say you're going to do like a Ball State Cardinals when, game? When is that? When do you die? When, by the time he has Only the next pepper. <laughs> I didn't know if you'd already planned it. It's before I die, I will have officiated a major conference basketball game, Division I, NCAA. Are you an IHSAA certified referee? This next year. You will be. Absolutely. Do you have a zebra shirt? Did you wear a zebra shirt to this I thing? I did. What size is it? Extra large. Is it, it fit okay? It fit. It, it was fine. fine. Yeah. I'm not going to wash it. It was adequate. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wear short short shorts when you're uh, when you Absolutely playing? not. What uh, did you bring your own whistle? Right. You have a whistle? I have Good. multiple whistles. Look at these tan these lines. are swimming trunks. Those this is why I'm looking here. I was told to wear my trunks because I was going to put in a dunk pool. Well, you can still tank. get in the dunk tank. There's but no if water. Somebody, if somebody hits the button, it's going to hurt. Why don't we just move la- it right under the spout hard. over there? It'll fill up in about five minutes. I mean, if we move the camera, we can we can do that to you. Or would you I rather... wore trunks for a reason. <laughs> we'll just have you go play in the water. Stupid That's human tricks, Mason. Just as entertaining. Uh, so, so you did the Spice and Freedom Days. T- tell yeah. me honestly, how was how was Danny Morrill on the court? How, tell me about his game. What I'm did going you see? to be completely it's... honest, and I hope Danny doesn't kill me. He was quick on the court, not hot off the shot. All He's right? not a shooter. He's never been a now, shooter. He made I think He's a like good two defender. threes, two threes. He he likes to take some. He likes to use the body. I can tell you that. Very first one, I gave it to him. A guy plowed him over on a, on a spin move. I, I sent him back the offensive foul, but the next time... You gave time Danny was, an offensive foul. No, 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 no. He you, took the charge. He took the charge. Offensive foul. But the next time he tried it, too quick. No, it was a block. He, he told me, in his words, was, you're, you're, What, ref? <laughs> this is my seat. <laughs> and I said, No, sir. I said, On the body. Ball up top. That's what I told him. That's what you said. Yeah. You you got deep and you used your deep voice. No, I just blew the whistle really loud so nobody could hear me. And I, and I just pointed up top so they put the ball up top. Were you doing this all alone? I did. I officiated all the games myself. Is this a half court game? We did play half court, three versus three, pass off the top. First one to 21, 20 minute running clock. How many fouls do these guys get? So it's just like a regular game. Personally, you can't foul out, but once your team reaches seven, it's two free throws. A lot of tournaments will play it if you foul after the seventh and go into the bonus. It's an automatic two points on the board. But I don't like that. So, Are you struggling? You look like you're still dying my a stomach, little on the I'm inside. throwing up burps. They're just coming. 
<laughs> I'm waiting for it. It's going to all come in a minute. I contemplated walking over there to that trash can earlier. From but jalapenos. I can't eat spicy Is stuff, Is mayonnaise dude. spicy to you? No, I like mayonnaise. Miracle right. Whip, if yeah, I, pre- the last, what I prefer. The last stupid human trick uh. I want out of Mason. I, I, I bought that bag of marshmallows, and I wanted to see how many marshmallows Mason could fit in his mouth. Chubby bunny. But... I'm thinking challenge. I'm thinking Guffy wanted to wanted I would to, challenge to go one for one with him and see who can go who can get the most. How many we got enough there? in there? We got enough. Sarah, we may need you to adjust the camera just a little bit. Now no, we're we, fine. We don't have a guest over here. We can we can pivot nope, I got slightly. This. I'm moving over. Chris has got it. Chris right is here? going to re- relocate. What are we doing here? Relocate right here. Yeah. <laughs> so one v one. Good so, evening, ladies well, and gentlemen. While they're doing this. Let's uh, let's let's talk about the uh, the young farmer's pool, the pedal pool. You guys just do oh, this, but I maybe okay. Go ahead. Nobody needs you to talk for this part. Yeah. You can put things in your mouth; it'll be just fine. I want to talk Guffy's, about how Guffy and Mason have each got one in. Cade's son, Cannon. He, yes. Please don't narrate. They both have one in. Now they both have two in. We're, We're getting ready to put the third one in. <laughs> I've got this. We're on marshmallow number three. Oh, jeez. And they're four, all, and they're all on the left side. Yeah, at this Mason's point. Mason's packing all on the left, and Guffy is too. <laughs> now say Chubby Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Marshmallow number five. Oh, Mason, Mason, Mason got, got it out it. very clearly. Marshmallow number six. I, I think I think Mason has a big mouth. Yeah, Mason's Mason's, Mason's looking very. Seven. Seven. This is a major choking hazard. You're on eight. <clears throat> We're gonna run out of marshmallows. Nine. How many is Guffy on? Well, I think uh-oh. nine's about it for Mason. <laughs> Mason's running. That was that. Can you get one more in, Guffy? <laughs> if you get one more in, then you Can win. I see ten? Can we see ten marshmallows? Ten? The best part is if Sarah moves just a little bit, Mason's puking in the trash can is actually in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Did I miss one, or is that still ten? Eleven? Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be that's right there. There's well. that. <laughs> All right, I don't think it counts anymore because your mouth is open. Thirteen. Your mouth is like wide that's open. Thir- and that was <laughs> that was thirteen. Was the button for thirteen for mollos for no, Chris? No, I could have beat him. <clears throat> the problem was I needed to get that puke out first. That's Sorry, we Please ran stop. out of marshmallows. What happened was... Please stop. We're well, done. you know that little... We're done. Oh, now, how much is... peanut butter can you fit in your there. mouth? It could, didn't go back down. Can you fit a whole jar of peanut butter in your mouth? I'm willing to put every this... single one of those marshmallows right there in my mouth. <laughs> can you finish the peanut butter off? That's disgusting. <laughs> I'll try. All right, yeah. Well, well, you work on that while, uh, while, while, while the boys over Don't do here. it. You're going to puke again. <laughs> I'll, we'll give you some more pie at the end. It's not worth it. There's no fame or glory in this. That that jar is not coming home. It, it's it, it's There's here plenty of fame and glory in this Dakota. Not for Mason. Mason. Well, maybe not for us. There is. <laughs> Mason Rotting House is is live on the Boss Hog Valley podcast, eating an entire jar of peanut butter now. He started with the jalapenos. He's filled his mouth with you marshmallows. Stop. You're gonna puke. You're gonna, and, you're gonna throw and up. And he's going to eat. <laughs> There's too much sugar in an that, entire man. week's worth it's of gonna, peanut butter. No. <laughs> the sugar. Week. You go through this much peanut butter in a week? No, I, well, I mean a, a week's worth of sugar. <laughs> I used to. This is what I curl. This is what I curl. He's uh, and this is the day you gave blood. Plasma. He, Plasma. He needs it back. He need he needs it in his system. Got protein pack. Oh. <laughs> no, no, we're not. This no. is this is getting ugly. Well, so does anybody? What's next up? Final no, thoughts? we're not doing the. Ch- we're not. That is for the. That's for the charity. You're not eating the chicken. Final thoughts? No. Well, we're trying to. We're trying to cover the uh, the young tractor. Uh, oh, okay. The, the I just wanted to point out that uh, Cade's son. It was hilarious that when whenever he got on the tractor. He flipped his hat he around. He spun backwards. his hat around. He That's literally a went like technique. he you went just the first gave it away. two feet. Yeah, he went his first two feet. He stopped everything. He turned his hat about around backwards, like, and then on. he and won then the class. It Something's out. not right. Ba-bam. Now we're good. Good to go. That was awesome. It was it was, it was impressive. 
And then, uh, and when Will Thompson, uh, Will, Will was the world's, it was the two to three year old category. Oh, well, Will, he's the Will, world's tallest. Will is three-year-old. the world's tallest three year old. Yeah. Or Henry County's true. tallest three year old. Uh, he, he had them. At least. I, it's like, uh, his mom had him at the perfect time for this event. Wait, she Sarah, had, there's a, a world outside of Henry County? Not, not with a young farmer's yes. pedal pull. I've never been outside. Well, <laughs> got, I didn't you, realize Lafayette was in Lafayette. Henry County. Hey, buddy. Lafayette's in Tippecanoe <laughs> County. You've been to a I couple thought, of them. I okay. thought the whole entire world Are was you, Henry County. you got to shut this peanut butter yeah. because there's bugs everywhere. We're going to run out of time. you got to finish the peanut butter. Either finish it off or close it up. Either finish it off or eat another jalapeno. <laughs> Pick one or the other. Look at Dakota. You He's getting very angry. The peanut butter. So I have been out here every day this week, Dakota. <laughs> And I've, I've discovered a new favorite pastime of mine. It's a great pastime. All of my friends, a but lot of my friends have got kids now. But later. They've got two, three, four-year-old kids. Probably. Dakota is not paying any attention at all. Mason's still trying to shovel peanut butter in his mouth. He's trying to catch a fly What are you doing? Are you going to eat a fly? No, I'm going to catch a fly. You're going to... And then eat it. Then eat it. For You're troubled. You're a troubled youth. As an intern, tell me about the children with the candy... And now what happens is that we're running this food booth out here, and I have an endless supply of candy bars and Snickers and, uh, and Skittles. Yeah. So I've been buying candy for children and giving it to them right in front of their parents. And the parents can't say no. It's creepy. At least you're so not I just, giving it I'm to just strangers' giving, I'm just children. giving kids candy, and I'm, I'm earning their love. But last night, Rachel, uh, Rachel Connor, who uh, is a Henry County 4-H alum, uh, Rachel Connor was here with her, her little son, Bear. He was three years old. It was about 10 o'clock at night, and I bought him a pack of Snickers. Oh, no, it was, Skittles. Skittles. a pack of Skittles. Skittles. And I had him promise me, and I didn't think it would happen, but I had him promise me that he would not eat those until after breakfast. So about midnight last night, I got a text from his mom who had taken the package of Skittles, and he had put them on his breakfast chair, and he was going to eat them this morning after breakfast. So he had the self-restraint, <laughs> and I got the picture of him putting them on his... So he didn't forget. They were right there by his high chair for the morning. That's so awesome. I, um, That's hilarious. I'm thinking 8.30 this morning, the kid's on Skittles. Yep. So it's, this is my new favorite game. Just remember, Jeremiah, that one day you may have children. We may have children that... Your friends will want to give candy to, and we will have to deal with the consequences. Yeah. Karma. Well, I mean, it's uh, uh, I, I don't think uh, I don't think I don't think Listen this is this could possibly I don't this. think this could possibly go wrong in I'm any way. I'm pretty sure your friends know how seems, to hold a grudge. Seems fine. No, it's true. they'll forget by then. I think we'll have we'll get new friends. It'll be good. We'll have new <laughs> friends. We'll get new friends. <laughs> You've we'll had these friends them. since you were like twelve. Yeah. No. No. This Jeremiah? is this will be the end. Are you where still do, eating? Where do babies come from? <laughs> they Is it cut, still before? Well, 8 we get the jalapenos PM? at Kroger. I assume we can get the babies there too, right next to that, the diapers. With that, we're on to final thoughts. All right, good call, Dakota. What do you? Good let's call. start with Mason here. You got any I'll final? All right, I guess I'll go first. Uh, my final thoughts is 100 R. days, boys. 100 days until I will be back at the Coliseum watching For hockey? my Indy Fuel start up. There's been a lot of off-season changes. Um, we hired a new coach. We've hired some play. We've, you know, we've signed some players. We've let some players that I've actually enjoyed watching, um, play the game. We've let them go. Some of them went to the European market. Some went down south. It's going to be interesting because it seems so far that the, the team's going to be pretty much brand new. Um, I'm excited to see younger team, maybe a little more speed. A little more ferocity. And that's the end of the minor league hockey minute, everybody. So, <laughs> look, listen to Jeremiah cutting you off while he, but he will plan and dedicate an entire episode to his favorite sport. He will. It's a major league sport. No, it's not. Millions. It's a bunch of left turns. <laughs> millions and millions of dollars. There are corporate sponsors. There's left turns. How many people go to your hockey games? Hold on. Over the course no, one no. one hockey game. How many how people, many show people up? go to a hockey how game? How many people show up at one of your hockey games? On average. Games? Well, I can't nearly fit in as many left turns. That's beside the point. I asked you how many people go to the hockey game. I think it's irrelevant. Right? It's totally irrelevant. It, it's irrelevant. But, That's irrelevant. 
top fan and Patreon member as uh, Andrew Bowman is in the chat, and he wants to know because he cares about your hockey minute. He's the one guy. Did they ever name the dogs that you were talking about weeks ago? They did. Oh my gosh, they did. But I didn't freaking <laughs> care enough to pay attention. Okay, great. Now you know how we feel. All right, Mason. I'm, I'm gonna cut you off. I swear. Mason, any final thoughts from you, sir? How? As I sit here with my stomach in bubbles, peanut butter on the roof of my mouth, basically, stuck in my teeth, my final thoughts are, um, since he gave a countdown, I'll give a countdown. We're less than a month until I get to leave Henry County. (laughs) Wait, what? There's a world outside of Henry County? Leave Newcastle, back up in northern Henry County, northwest Henry County. Purdue University <laughs> is calling my name again. Extended Henry County. They really want my money. Actually, not my money. I did take advantage of prior episode back a, a boiler today. Got some money from them. Uh, but so if it'll be a rare occurrence that you see me. Um, the internship is almost over. The internship unpaid is almost <laughs> over. Oh, you think you're going to be a paid staff member? I at the feel end of the month. honored that I and privileged that I was here live at the Henry County 4-H Fair, getting to see a round robin, as they call it, trying some fresh jalapenos, pinos, however you say it, from Kroger. <laughs> a always delicious tropical shaved ice. Don't you had forget a, you the had chocolate a, pie. A, a Shenandoah lemon a, shake, shake up. I had a Shenandoah FFA lemon shake up one dollar in the food booth. That's the Shenandoah F, the 4H club. That's nothing to do with FFA. You said FFA F eight four eight. Who is it? It's the Shenandoah 4H club. Shenandoah 4H, not FFA. You didn't see any blue jackets in there. This it's is too why you, freaking hot to wear the blue jackets. <laughs> this is why you're uh, um, an unpaid I'm an intern. intern. Um, and what else did we get today? Oh, chocolate some chocolate pie. chip pie made by Jessica Winning. Jessica Winning. Very delicious. It was a pretty flaky. good day at the fair, what you're saying. It was a very good county fair that I didn't have to pay for anything. So come out, enjoy. Oh, Kai's Creations always. Come out, enjoy them. They have uh, cold beverages, but <laughs> there's my final that? thoughts. What is this? Listen the peppers have guy. gone to his head. Yeah, I think so. The peppers have definitely gone to his head. Mm. Dakota, what do you got? Um, don't have a whole lot. This is uh, my final thoughts for episode number 121. Are Of course, that I'm thankful for all of the Patreon members who made it possible for us to purchase all of our equipment that we were able to bring this podcast to you live. We were able to stream it straight to Facebook live on location. This was a first time for us, and everything went extremely, extremely well. It went smoothly. It's a miracle. So we're going we're gonna to do some more experimentation and see if maybe one day we can start live streaming public meetings again. Uh, I'm just going to put that little bug out there. But at this point, I think it might be possible. All right. Well, I uh, do need to thank the uh, Henry County uh, Fair for uh, inviting us out here. This has been fun. Uh, didn't know what to expect, but it worked out okay. Uh, my lovely bride is sitting here with me, and she's got a microphone in her hand. I think Danny is rolling up. There's a chance that that might be Danny in the Nissan or Josie. Josie. She's parking, and I think she's going to hit the tent, and we're all going to get crushed. Um, she drives a very large SUV. Uh, a little nervous sitting here in this seat. Uh, Sarah, I want to know if you know who you saw play baseball yesterday at the Indianapolis Indians game. There was a very famous... I believe he's related Athlete. to the goat. The goat of basketball. Who's the goat of basketball? Michael Jordan. Mike, you think whoa, Michael whoa, Jordan? Whoa. You think Michael Jordan played in the baseball game? No, or somebody he's related, related to Michael Jordan. Related to Michael like, Jordan. I don't think he's, he's related. Like through the tree. <laughs> through. That's no. That's Are you solid. sure? I'm pretty sure that's a solid no. Then who was it? Tim Tebow is not related to Michael Jordan. Tim Tebow. Did he really play? Was in the baseball yes. game with you yesterday. Oh my goodness! Did you notice a large crowd and a lot no. of people wearing Denver Broncos? You didn't know. Businessman special. There was about no. You didn't know like the perfect specimen. I, like, I just perfect listened specimen to of a man talk. was there. My that husband is... was not at that game. No, well, Tim you. Tebow was, <laughs> but I was. <laughs> so, no, the game was not crowded at all. 
And I was more interested in finding a cup with a pinata on it. What? what does that have to do with anything? They have pachanga ritas, or what they're called. Uh, we, it's, it's and a it has, it's we a little cup with a pinata. It's adorable. All right. So, but no, I did not watch so the game. I did not see Tim Tebow. I was just present. You were, there you were there for Tim Tebow. For a company outing. All right. Well, that's that. I just wanted to know if you, and here comes, here comes Danny. This is our, we're going to get Danny on real quick before we, uh, I could see him driving the truck down the hill here from the, uh, from the horse and pony. Hopefully show. he can park right She's there. So we will, my, can, we will cycle, cycle out Sarah. Danny is there arriving. There he is. He's got a child not in a seatbelt. That looks good. Hold that's on. Lovely. We, not only do we have Danny, but we could have the winner. We have the his winner age bracket of the pedal pool. The one, the only, Will. Let's get Will Dakota on the podcast. Dakota has disappeared. Dakota has, Dakota has hey, Josie, disappeared. Hey, Josie, we need the winner of the pedal pool to come be on this podcast. Come on, Will. Come here, Will. Come here. He's, he's coming this way. He's, I need you to tell me something. He's holding his mom's hand as he's working his way over, over here. here. Come here. Go to Jer. Working, working on a flying, uh, hey. a flying guest change here. So, Will... Danny, what you're did on this you do time. in this tent earlier this week? Huh? Huh? What did you do in this tent earlier this week when you had to pedal? What was that? Mia. Yeah, did you win? Yes. What did you win? Tractor pull. A tractor pull. You won the pull. tractor pull. Awesome. Did you get something for it? Hey. You got hay. Hey. Did you get a trophy? Yes. Yes. Oh, it was heavy? Did you have a lot of weight back there? Yes. All right. Awesome. Do you want to go give this microphone to Danny? We've got one right here. Oh, never mind. Dakota took it. Danny has cycled into uh, Dakota's chair. Danny, you've been... uh, We we worked our way into final thoughts, but we're we're always willing to make an adjustment. Yeah. You've uh, you've been doing the horse and pony show? Huh? Yeah, we've been doing the horse and pony show since uh, 8.45 this morning. So we took about a four-hour break. A full day. A yeah. four-hour break. Yeah, it was hot. So you just stopped? We stopped uh, after all the riding classes and moved to break, and then we started contesting at 6 p.m. You look like you've been working. Yes. You're, you're covered in dirt. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is actually my second shirt, and I had one shower today. I went home for about four hours and laid on the couch in my underwear and cooled off. Mama. Mama. We, there's still a, Will Thompson is over here at the end, the uh, pedal pull winner, and he's just going rogue here. Are you having a good time at the fair, Will? Are you having? Yes. yes. All right. Have you caught any fish? You go, you like to go fishing, right? Yes. Yes. Did you catch any fish today? Two. Two. He's he's a liar. He's lying. It's already told fishing stories. Well, how big was the fish you caught? This big. This big. That looked that looked like you just stuck your arm out. Mama, Mama, I'm on TV. <laughs> so what? Uh, what's the fair been like for you, Danny? Uh, it's been pretty stress free so far, really. Mama, um, had a few fun Wee. things to do uh, for the horse Mama. and pony show today. I was able to judge Mama. all the contesting classes, so that was fun. Anybody fall off? Uh, yeah, you, you didn't Morgan, keep them all on. Morgan Phillips fell off. Really? Yep. Boy, did she bounce? She rolled pretty good, but then the second time, <laughs> uh, the second time her horse bucked, she stayed on. So it was good. Huh? It's good time so far. Good time. They could. Uh, Dan- and you got more tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yep. The fair start continues at, on. Uh, start at eight thirty tomorrow morning, and I bet we'll be done by two. Hi. There Mama. you go. So people can come back out on Friday and check out yes. uh, check out the rest of the horse and pony show. Yep. And then now, we've got awards directly following, so that'll be good too. And then the uh, the 4-H auction will be happening here uh, during the day as well. Starts at one at one o'clock. Uh, uh, now we heard we heard Mason's side of uh, <laughs> Saturday's basketball, and he said that Hi, Mama. he was very generous to you at one point, and Mama? he gave you he, he took a charge. I earned a charge. I hit the ground hard. You took it. You, you, and he traveled before he hit me. So, well, that should have been a dead ball, and Mama. you should have been hit for nothing. That's, that's what it felt like. That's what it felt like. I called it clean. You got what you worked for. It's true. You got to reward the defensive player. That's always the way it should work. Not always. 
when you throw that hip out real soon, huh? last minute, I got, I got to give you a, a block on that one, buddy. No, that one, I think it, I told you to S my D. Okay. <laughs> no. Oh, is that what you, I thought you said, that's my seat. Mm. That's <laughs> oh. my seat. Mm. <laughs> oh. That makes more sense. <laughs> That's why I said that's my seat. Like he was. <laughs> I, I guess it's, it was the other way around. <laughs> All right, uh, we have uh, Danny. Uh, you've you've just arrived, but we have jalapenos. If you're interested in those nope. sorts of things, yeah. Half-eaten marshmallows, peanut butter, and uh, some chocolate pie is a little and left as well. Always delicious. And a can of cream of mushroom cream of soup. mushroom soup. That is the worst thing I was offered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This has been fun. Thank you guys for uh, for for hanging out with us. Uh, had a live crowd coming uh, coming in and out at the fair. Uh, we will be back next week for the uh, for a studio edition of the show. Hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll catch you all next time. Thank you for listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty, which is part of the We Are Libertarians Network. I am Chris Spangle, and I am the founder of this network. And I invite you to listen to all of our shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com or by searching for these in your podcatcher. The flagship show is the We Are Libertarians podcast, where we apply libertarian principles to current events. The Brian Nichols Show is a conversation amongst Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, as they talk about what is happening in the news. And we have many other podcasts like The Chris Spangle Show, Upward, The Cost, Raw Audio Politics, Miranda's World, and Tad Talk, which is quite a ride. So check all of these out. Go to WeAreLibertarians.com and you can check out all of our great podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at WeAreLibertarians.com. <laughs>